Hello, my name is John Lojak. I'm an MBA student and fellow at the Center for Digital Strategies here at the Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth College. We're lucky to have the CEO of Fusion One, Mike Malika, here today with us to talk about mobile. We've been having an ongoing mobile conversation. If you look into the future, even just sort of 18 months, two years out, where do you see mobile evolving? What are some of the big developments that you think will come here in the near term? Um, well, there's you know there's so much happening so fast. Uh, you know. I, I just think that that, that idea of um, your device being you know more and more primary in your life, and you know everything that goes along with it, is um, you know is is something that's going to happen. Um, you know, I, for instance, um, I happen to have a Google Android phone, um, and just things like speech recognition on that phone um, have totally changed the user interface and what I can do with it. Um, my ability to be able to integrate um, things like speech recognition, search, and then navigation, uh, and the way, the way that it's presented to me as a consumer, um, as I was coming up here to, to Dartmouth, um, you know, I, I said into my Android phone, um, Hanover Inn, and it literally recognized the, the name, um, was able to do a search on the Hanover Inn. I clicked on the Hanover Inn, it asked me whether I wanted to navigate there, and it gave me turn-by-turn -turn directions from Boston. And so that didn't exist six months ago. Um, and so we're on a pace of, of you know, technology integration and, and evolution that uh, is just tremendous given the amount of focus and, and investment going into the mobile marketplace. There are more and more mobile devices coming out, e-readers, uh, iPads. Do you think those will add to the mobile landscape? Will they replace phones to a certain degree, or are they all complementary? I, I think they're all complementary. Uh, you know, one of the things that mobile network providers worry about is um, in the old days, you could measure the, the capacity of a network because people were limited um, by, you know, a 24-hour day and their ability to speak. And so you could do, you know, pretty um, uh, refined planning on how much, how big you needed your network to be. With all of these connected devices that are coming out, like the Kindle and the iPad and, and, and others, um, the, the network planning is um, a very complex task because you know, uh, your ability to be able to throw data you know, at the network from you know, a PC or a smartphone is much different than you know, if you were just having a conversation. Um, so I, I think that that's an interesting phenomenon with all the devices coming out. Um, the other thing that I think is interesting is the, the change in the business model. Uh, before, you would go to your you know, Sprint store and you would buy your phone from Sprint or your um, data card from Sprint. Uh, in, in, you know, today, you can go to Best Buy and buy a, a Dell laptop or a Dell um, phone and you can pick your operator. And so if you turn on the new phone or the new laptop, you'll begin to get um, offers from Verizon or AT&T or Sprint to sign up with them as your service provider. And it's, it's changed the model so it's much more OEM focused and device centric and the operators are taking a back seat. And so I, I think in the device centric model that you, know, you asked about, um, there, that's the fundamental transition where you know, the, the person in the front seat is changing. And so it will be Apple or it will be you know, a Kindle or a Dell. It won't be Verizon, AT&T, or Sprint. And that'll change you know, the opportunities for businesses and, and business models, and um, you know, hopefully people at, at Tuck will, will come up with some interesting ideas to take advantage of that. So speaking of Tuck, we have a bunch of MBAs graduating soon. What advice would you give to an MBA coming out now that wants to move into mobile? Where, where should they head? What are the interesting challenges they should, they should look at? Well, we've talked a little bit about um, business models <clears throat> and where value exists. Um, the, the, the thing that I would focus most on is uh, where that value exists. Um, historically in mobile, if you look at the value chain, the operators have had you know, literally 95% of, of the, value, the value of a dollar um, with 4% you know, going to the handset provider and 1% going to the applications provider. And so if you didn't have an operator-centric business model where you could participate in their value chain, you were relegated to a very small percentage of the value. 
So that's changing with Apple and, and you know the app stores and all of those things are now in transition, the device-centric market that we talked about. So if I were at Tuck, I would look at it from that perspective, where value exists, how the business model's changing, and you know how I can participate in that. And then, you know, and that is an after effect. What are the applications that are interesting? Um, first, you have to find a market where there's enough value to exist. Um, and then, you know, within that market, you'll, you know, probably find all kinds of different, you know, opportunities. Mike, we owe you a special thanks. It's the end of April and it's snowing outside. You still made the trip to Hanover. <coughs> Uh, on behalf of the Center for Digital Strategies and Tuck, I'd like to thank you again for taking your time and coming in, sharing your thoughts on mobile with us. This has been John Lojak with the Center for Digital Strategies and part of the Brit Technology Series here at the Tuck School of Business. Thanks, John. Thank you.